these very same people are the quickest to cry racism at the slightest provocation or for no reason at all. There's no systemic racism, there is no law, there is nothing that says that I can't do something as a black person that you can do. We're honoring all of the great white men who are being smeared and defamed and torn down. As this is being recorded, we're in Holy Week for 2023. Tomorrow, we will celebrate Maundy Thursday, commemorating the activity of Jesus with his disciples in the upper room on the night before his crucifixion. This will be followed by Good Friday, remembering Jesus' atoning, sacrificial death on the cross. Holy Saturday, where Jesus victoriously descended into hell. And Resurrection Sunday, the day that Jesus rose from the dead and secured our salvation. Without a doubt, this is the holiest and most significant week of the year for the Christian. But is that holiness, is that significance undervalued by younger people in this nation? According to a recent report posted by Ryan Foley of the Christian Post, the answer is yes. Foley writes, the share of Americans who see the value of patriotism and religious faith has declined sharply in the past four years as younger Americans detach themselves from traditional American values long honored by older generations. Foley cites a survey conducted jointly by the Wall Street Journal and the University of Chicago's National Opinion Research Center, or NORC, which asked 1,019 adults what values they view as very important. The responses collected from March 1st to the 13th of this year show a drop in the percentage of Americans who place a high premium on the values of patriotism, religion, having children, and community involvement compared to previous surveys asking the same questions. The percentage of Americans who characterize religion as very important has nosedived, decreasing from 62% in 1998 to 48% in 2019 to 39% in 2023. 38% of Americans identify patriotism as a very important value, which is a steep decline from the 61% who described it that way in 2019 and the 70% who did the same in 1998. While 59% of Americans surveyed in 1998 said having children was very important to them, just 43% said so in 2019, and by 2023, the number is just 30%. When it comes to valuing community involvement, that number has risen and fallen over the past 25 years. Coming in at 47% in 1998, it rose to 62% in 2019. But in this most recent survey, the interest fell substantially to just 27%. Well, what do Americans seem to value as being very important? Money. 43% of Americans classified money as very important in 2023, an increase from the 41% who listed finances as one of their most important considerations in 2019, and 30% who called money very important in 1998. Those are the overall results. When we look at the ages of the respondents, we find that there is a healthy generation gap regarding the values viewed by respondents as very important. Those older than 65 characterize patriotism and religion as very important, while less than one-third had the same view about having children. On the other hand, significantly smaller shares of respondents between the ages of 18 and 29 identified patriotism and religion as very important. Only 23% of young Americans thought having children was very important. Views toward religion, patriotism, community involvement, and having children differed based on political affiliation. Majorities of Republicans said patriotism and religion were very important to them, while significantly smaller shares of Democrats and independents listed patriotism or religion as very important values. Less than half of Republicans, Democrats, and independents said that having children was very important to them. 32% of Democrats cited community involvement as a very important value. 25% of Republicans and 23% of independents agreed. Equal shares of Republicans and Democrats, 45%, pointed to money as a very important value, while 36% of independents did. The survey also asked respondents to weigh in on certain cultural issues. 
56% of respondents expressed support for requiring trans-identified athletes to play on sports teams that align with their biological sex, while 17% supported allowing trans-identified athletes to compete on teams designated for the opposite sex. This is a national issue. Concerns about the fairness of allowing men to compete on women's sports teams has prompted 19 states, including our own Louisiana, to pass laws requiring athletes to compete on teams that match their biological sex. 43% of respondents believe that society has gone too far in accepting people who are transgender, while 37% believe society had not gone far enough in accepting people who are gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Pluralities of those surveyed stated that businesses, schools, and universities had not gone far enough in taking steps to promote racial and ethnic diversity. Majorities of Republicans thought that society had gone too far in accepting people who are transgender and accepting people who are gay, lesbian, or bisexual. 55% of Republicans thought schools had gone too far in promoting racial and ethnic diversity, while 52% said the same about businesses. When asked how they felt about people identifying their pronouns, such as he, him, she, her, or they, them, in email, social media, communication, or conversations, 37% of those surveyed said they viewed the focus on pronouns as neither favorable nor unfavorable, followed by 27% who had a very unfavorable view of people announcing their pronouns in written communication, 16% who viewed the phenomenon as somewhat favorable, 12% who described it as very favorable, and 8% who characterized it as somewhat favorable. 35% of respondents had a very unfavorable view of being asked to use gender-neutral pronouns such as they, them, when addressing another person, followed by 32% who had a neutral opinion on the matter, and 15% had a somewhat unfavorable opinion about requests to use gender-neutral pronouns. The remaining respondents saw requests to use gender-neutral pronouns as very favorable or somewhat favorable. These responses are important because they reveal the thinking of the world in which we seek to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are a certain age, you may be homogeneous. That is, you may believe that people's view of the world and of cultural mores are like yours. If you hold that view, then you are likely disinclined to be open to new gospel appeals aimed at reaching people who have a different view. The secularizing of America has been a fear within the religious community for generations. And now, more than ever, it seems like that fear is becoming reality. As black Christians, we've long believed that this secularization was white people's problem. But that's no longer the case. Fewer and fewer young black people are making the church a priority opting for a designation of spiritual that makes less of a demand on them to commit to a single church or denominational affiliation. Primarily, they seem no longer willing to accept the dichotomy that has long existed between what is acceptable in the church and what is acceptable in the world regarding personal values and lifestyles. If we're not welcoming to the homosexual or transgender person who is a relative or neighbor a schoolmate or friend of our parishioners, if we're not welcoming to the closeted homosexual or transgender person who is a member of our church families, the duplicity of such a view being proffered in the name of an all-loving, all-forgiving Christ is less and less appealing to succeeding generations. Paul said to the church at Corinth, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. If the goal is salvation, then local congregations must take a look at the world with fresh eyes and see how to most effectively proclaim Christ. This is something we should pray about. Lord God, we pause this evening to ask that you would open the eyes of your church to the trends that challenge our witness for you to a world that desperately needs to know you. Bless your church to prepare to praise, pray, proclaim, and present you better by having a more complete and comprehensive understanding of the thinking of those to whom we witness. Let us keep a firm grip on the Bible in one hand 
and the newspaper in the other, that we might weave a presentation of the gospel that is relevant, meaningful, and purposeful. In this Holy Week, we thank you for Jesus, who not only atoned for our sin, but secured our salvation. Redouble our commitment to standing on all that this means in our ministry, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but that we would be doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.